Greetings and salutations everyone. Welcome to Dumb Robot. I'm Ben and today we're going to be creating a 3D sculpt for a cryptid creature that's kind of along the lines of the Wraith or the Dover Demon. Now if you don't know what those are, they're these hobbly looking skinny cryptid monsters that will like eat your soul or something like that. So we're going to try to go over the basics in ZBrush to create our own version of one of these. This will be part one in a multi-part series where while designing this creature we're going to go through the step-by-step -step process of each phase of the design. So in this video we're going to be going over the use of Z-spheres to lay out the basic mesh of our character and to build out the skeleton before we layer on anatomy. So join me now as we dive into the creation of our very own cryptid monster. Alright we're going to start this off by creating the base shape and mesh for our creature and we're going to do that by utilizing Z-spheres. If you're new to ZBrush and you're trying to learn for the first time to create your own sculptures, then this is going to be an extremely helpful tool for beginners. It's very easy to use. As you can see, you basically just draw out these spheres on top of each other and then they're all articulated and, jo and have joints. So we can pretty much just move them to whatever shape and or whatever size anyways and whatever uh, position we need to create our basic shape. And you can attach more than one sphere per time uh, at a time to each other sphere. So it helps you really lay out your basic geometry for building out your anatomy. Uh, well, like the really basic blocks of your anatomy, like your arms and your legs and uh, some of the, the shape of the body as well. So I've created here, I've created a torso and the smaller bit down there is the head. I know it looks kind of like a worm, but we're going to turn this into our, the rake basically, some kind of monster like that. Before I go any further, I just want to point out that there's only really a few tools you need to use when adjusting Z-spheres. That's the draw tool to create more Z-spheres, the move tool to move them around, and the scale tool, which will adjust the size of the spheres. So if any of you newer users are following along, I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown on the tools that I'm currently using. So when you're using Z-spheres, when you draw your initial sphere, you're going to want to go ahead and hit the edit button and then that'll let you edit the, the current sphere that you selected. Because otherwise, if you try to draw spheres like I'm currently doing, it'll just keep adding more individual spheres. Alright, what I've just selected was a previewer, which gives you a little quick look at your mesh. You select this by pressing A. If you're a first time user of ZBrush, you're probably wondering how the heck I'm doing that. Well, it's simple to your viewer. You hit X to activate your symmetry tool. Once your symmetry tool is activated, it's automatically aligned along the X axis. Now, if you need to adjust this, you can adjust it by going into the transform panel, and that's something we can go over later. Now, as you can see, we've begun generating the arms for the creature, so it's beginning to take a little bit more noticeable of a shape. You can kind of start to see where the humanoid visage of it's going to be. But we want to go out and put some abnormal features in there as well. So I've protruded the shoulders, it's got this strange overarching like hunch and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we gave it this really thin waist there and we're gonna give it really skinny long a little bit more animalistic legs too to kind of really drive home that it's just it's just human enough but it's gonna be like an aberration too so it should make it look kind of creepy in an unnatural way so we've managed to lay out a good basic form for the creature we're going to just go ahead and make some slight adjustments to the arms and legs just so it doesn't look so stiff and rigid. Give it a little bit more of an organic natural pose. But as you can see, we pretty much maintain the basics for how Z-spheres work. You just go in, you add a sphere, and you adjust it, its size and its location to get you the general silhouette that you're looking for. And you just keep adding and adding and adjusting it as you need to until you build out your basic shape. So now that you've got like the basics down, for how to add your overall like base geometry, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. Okay, now we're going to start building out the basics for our hand. And as I said before, you can build more than one Z-sphere onto another Z-sphere. But when you start piling them all together like this, that's when you start getting clipping. And that's what's causing the uh, the arm to kind of go invisible there. But as you can see, I've also managed to detach one, kind of. So I'm going to go back and redo that real quick and then make sure that they're all placed directly onto the Z-sphere and not the ligaments uh, in between. 
So now that we got the Z spheres kind of laid out, we can start building out the base geometry for our hand. I know this process can feel tedious and time consuming, but it really is important. When you start giving yourself a really good base to work with, it makes sculpting so much easier because you're not having to recover for any more mistakes. Working with a good base is the best way to go. So now here you can see that I'm adjusting the finger joints and I'm putting them like down to the ground pretty much. So the reason I'm doing this is so when I export the model later and import it into like 30s Max, that it's going to be, uh, it's going to have the pivot point for the character model already kind of zeroed. So it makes moving it around and scaling it and everything just a little bit easier. Awesome. Our character is really starting to take shape right now. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the hand some more. And right now you can adjust all of these pieces all at one time like I'm doing by selecting the parent z-sphere right there which is the wrist and you can drag it while holding control and that will drag all of the other z-spheres with it proportionally that's how i was able to move the hand like that instead of having to move each z-sphere individually it makes things a lot faster but we wanted to adjust the hands and the fingers here to make it appear as the hands are actually supporting a little bit more of the weight and the palms aren't totally flat we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments on the fingers too. Try to elongate them, make it a little bit more natural, kind of alien-like. And then we're going to go ahead and adjust the hands a little more, take a little bit more better look at this. Let me see if we can't spread the hands out more. The palm itself, make it a little bigger. It's a little thin. Alright, just kind of straighten these fingers out, spread them out a little bit more. All right, and that's pretty much how you build a more complex shape like a hand using nothing but Z-spheres. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use these same processes that we just went through to fill out the rest of the character's details. All right, and that's pretty much it. That's how you use Z-spheres to create the base mesh for your character. Um, I think I'm pretty much happy with where this is at right now. And as you can see, we have like the general layout of what our creature is gonna look like. Now it's gonna take some more tweaks and some more changes down along the road, but at this point, we're pretty much ready to start sculpting and adding on the, the rest of the, uh, the anat anatomical structures like muscles and bone and stuff like that. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and were able to learn something with me. If you found this video useful then please go ahead and like and subscribe. I'll be releasing more videos soon as a beginner series to creature design in ZBrush. Thanks again for joining me on this experience and I'll see you around next time. Bye!